Welcome back. Well, after much speculation and concerns, last Saturday, the Indonesian government have finally decided to hike the price of subsidized fuel. Uh, Indonesia's President Joko Widodo said that this was a decision that had to be made as government spending for subsidizing fuel prices has increased significantly this year following a surge in global oil prices. President Widodo said that spending on fuel subsidies will continue to increase. As a result, the government has decided to raise the price of subsidized fuel. The RON 90 Pertolite fuel variant will be increased by 30% to 10,000 rupiah per liter. The RON 92 Pertamax fuel variant increased by 16%, while subsidized diesel will also be increased but by 32%. Anggaran subsidi dan kompensasi BBM tahun 2022 telah meningkat tiga kali lipat dari 152,5 triliun menjadi 502,4 triliun rupiah dan itu akan meningkat terus dan saat ini pemerintah harus membuat keputusan dalam situasi yang sulit. Ini adalah pilihan terakhir pemerintah, yaitu mengalihkan subsidi BBM, sehingga harga beberapa jenis BBM yang selama ini mendapat subsidi akan mengalami penyesuaian. So, was it the right move? Was there more that the Indonesian government could have done to cut down the state budget and keep subsidized fuel prices low? Well, to discuss, we are joined by economist and director of the Celius think tank, Bima Yudhistira. Hi, Bima. So, as we heard just now from President Joko Widodo, the Indonesian government said they have no choice but to raise subsidized fuel prices because the burden on the state budget is just too high. But are there other ways to cut spending in the budget, for example, on government operational needs? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think there is uh, some options. Uh, I agree totally with Pak Jokowi said that cutting the subsidies fuel, reallocating the fuel subsidies is the last options. But hence we have uh, several options that the government actually not uh, did these options previously before increasing the fuel subsidy. The first one is how the governments reform the bureaucratic because the amount of the government spending for the bureaucratic expense, for personal expense, is relatively very huge number. So we see that 14, uh, 416 trillions is spending for the personal expense, the government official expense, that somehow it can be cut because first, Many of the activities being happen online, like a Zoom meeting, is very efficient rather than uh, increasing number of the new city uh, uh, government services officials, for instance, because uh, cutting that kind of the budget can save a lot of the money. And the second one, the governments and the local government also have responsibility that many of the budget cannot be absorbed should be reallocated for the fuel subsidies. And the third one is how the government can decrease the level of the debt interest payments that every year we spend around 400 trillion rupiah for the creditors. So there's a lot of the options for the interest payment in the G20 itself. Emerging countries can propose to the creditors whether private creditor, IMF, World Bank, ADB, how to negotiate to postpone the interest payment. So instead of paying 400 trillion rupiah this year, the government can cut up to 20%, for instance, 10 to 20%, and that money can be helping the fuel subsidies. So I think the fuel subsidies should not be increased because there is some sort of uh, infrastructure project also need to be reallocated the funding especially the infrastructure project that not yet planned, still in the feasibility studies that can be postponed for maybe uh, next or next two years.
Right. So I think there's a lot of options that the government should do. Right. So talk more about that infrastructure projects, because Indonesia has been pushing those infrastructure developments on many things, from tolls to a new capital city, um, airports and so forth. But amid high oil prices, do you think it could be wise to delay some of the projects in this period of recovery to ensure that you know, fuel prices can remain low? Yeah, there is actually uh, two fundamental reasons. The first reason is the cost of run from that project is quite high because of the inflation, the raw materials, constructions, expense, uh, land clearing expense, interest bearing expense that the construction company need to pay is also increased that we call it cost of runs. In average, around 20 to 25 percent, all of the infrastructures suffer from the cost of runs. So if we continue with the rupee, rupiah depreciates against the US dollar, for instance, and the high oil price, I think it's a bad idea to continue the infrastructure project at all costs. Even we know that the infrastructure is somehow used for the political purposes, and it's in the meantime, it's nearby the election's years. But uh, the government should uh, prioritize between the infrastructures and uh, helping poor people uh, under poverty line a household that can maintain the price stability, food price stability. That's more important things. And the second one, I think uh, instead of a government spending too much in the infrastructures, the government can engage with the private sectors. So we have a sovereign wealth fund already established so that the sovereign wealth fund uh, can be uh, as um, facilitating more foreign investors or even domestic investors to help the government. So the government don't need to pay a lot of the funding this year to propose a new infrastructure project, which is a huge okay. mega project. We have uh, moving okay. capital to Kalimantan, which I don't think this year will be uh, necessary to start. Okay, now uh, let's, so let's, let's, let's just focus on, this, on the state budget. Uh, as you mentioned, cutting down on government operational costs and also some infrastructure projects. How much can the Indonesian government save? And is that enough to use to continue subsidizing fuel prices uh, for, you know, to keep prices lower? Because uh, Indonesia's finance minister said that we might have to raise subsidies by another 147 trillion rupiah. So do those efficiency costs, are they enough? Uh, to keep fuel prices low? Yeah, uh, if we figure out that the, the first one is the government spending on a personal expense, and we added that one with the government spending for a goods purchase, for instance, and the third one, if we combine it with the interest payments, so we got it around 1,200 more trillion rupiah. So if we can cut uh, the budget that all of the three main budget by 10%, we can achieve around 120 trillion rupiah equal or even more that this can help to ease with the subsidies of the fuel. So instead of the increasing uh, price of the subsidies fuel, the government can top up and even when the price of oil is going down, the government still have a fiscal space to decrease the Pertalite solar price in the market. Wow, okay. So uh, as, as we're seeing there on the screen, if those efficiency costs are taken, we can save around 194 to 220 trillion rupiah, certainly more than enough for the 147 trillion rupiah that you know, the finance ministry said that we need. So regarding all that, why has then the Indonesian government, do you think, why have they increased fuel prices if they can, as we saw just now, if they can cut down costs in the state budget? Why the need to increase fuel prices? Yeah, uh, the first one, perhaps the government afraid that the commodity uh, boom uh, decrease the income, the tax ratio will be decreased in the, in the following futures in the near futures that can threaten the government fiscal. But the second one is more a political rather than technocratic or like uh, academic uh, kind of things that the government see that if they can decreasing the subsidies and then the infrastructures will still be ongoing, either they have uh, cost overruns 
or the price of the raw materials burden of the infrastructure is very high but the government see that the infrastructure need to be done as part of the Mr. President legacy before the elections that uh, the citizens, its uh, electoral voters see that the Jokowi successfully implement mm. a ma major breakthrough or mega project infrastructures. This is kind of part of a more political economic kind of things mm. that the election needs somehow a visual kind of a campaign. Therefore, when there is a dilemma happening, saving the people purchasing powers, the ordinary people uh, purchasing power or selecting infrastructure spending mm. uh, perhaps the government will choose infrastructure still going on at all costs mm, but of course uh, you know as we know the government has uh, you know spent a significant amount of money on giving um, direct cash assistance especially to the lower income group uh, 600,000 rupiah for 20 20 million of families um, but, okay, let's now talk about the impact, though, Bima, on subsidized fuel price hikes. On inflation, will we see food price increases? And how much will food prices go up by in September or even for the rest of the year, Bima? Yeah, I think uh, if we see that the total inflation approximately will be increased between 7 to 7.5 percent year on year, full year this year. And the second one, if you're asking about the volatile food, the volatile food itself, we already uh, see the double-digit inflation of the volatile food in July, but is little bit in August. But we see in September, I think some of the commodity of the food commodity will be increased again, and I think this is will uh, contribute to more inflations from the food sides because of the energy and food is uh, interlinked. And then when the energy price is increased, the food price also becoming more expensive in the market. Right. So higher inflation to come in Indonesia. Well, that is the reality of the situation at the moment. Bima Yudhistira, economist and director of the Celios Think Tank. Thank you so much for your insights today.